Hey everybody, this is Scott Graham and Ron Smith with Auburn Extension. Uh, today we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, managing and scouting for escape bollworms in cotton. So uh, to start, you know, our primary management for cotton, we're using uh, BT uh, technologies. A lot of the cotton in the state this year in 2020 is uh, two-gene cotton, so it's primarily uh, things like Bulgar II. Uh, and we're starting to see in, in recent years some slippage uh, with, in protection with those technologies uh, where, where worms are coming through and we're having to make some sprays. So we want to talk a little bit about that and, and maybe kind of why we're seeing it and what to do about it. So a lot of the, well not a lot, all the uh, boll worms that we're seeing in our cotton are coming out of BT corn. So that's our problem. The, the generation is being selected through the corn uh, when the corn dries down and is no longer attractive uh, for the moths, they move into our cotton crop and begin to lay eggs, and that's when we start seeing issues. So it's very important that we uh, start scouting uh, when, when our corn's drying down and, and the moths are moving in. Generally, in South Alabama, we're looking around the 10th of July is when we expect to start seeing moths immigrating into a field. We move up to Central Alabama, we expect to start seeing them around July 20th. And then uh, in the northern part of the state, generally around the first week of August is when we need to start really scouting uh, for bollworm, uh, moths and eggs and start, start looking at our crop. So to, to scout our cotton for uh, bollworms, we like to start in the terminal, uh, look for eggs, look for, for uh, small larvae and maybe some feeding uh, in, in the terminals. Then we'll move down the plant to squares and, and flowers and bowls and we're looking for uh, obvious signs of feeding, uh, holes in, in squares or bowls, uh, a lot of uh, frass that they produce uh, as they feed, and that's what uh, that's what we're looking for uh, when we're looking for these worms. For control of, of uh, bowl worms, so we've got a couple of different options. Uh, for us in Alabama right now, uh, your pyrethroids are still providing pretty good suppression. Uh, a lot of times around that these flights tend to coincide with the uh, second or third week of bloom. We're spraying for stink bugs, so we get uh, good suppression with uh, the pyrethroid insecticides at that time. Uh, in, the, in North Alabama, where we seem to have a little bit more issues with escape bollworms, you know, we may want to go with our newer chemistries, uh, the diamides. They do cost a little bit more than the pyrethroids do, but they provide excellent control and uh, a good residual uh, depending on the, the rate uh, that you use of these products you can see anywhere from 14 to 20 days uh, control with these products so like I said they're, they're very good but they can be uh, they, they do cost more than our pyrethroids do. Let me see you didn't leave a lot to fill in there uh, Scott so uh, I can't add very much more except that uh, we like to think of the uh, entire complex of, that we may that may be occurring in cotton when these windows of uh, bow worms uh, move into cotton. So quite often it's either plant bugs or stink bugs, and a lot of times that may affect our choice of chemistry because uh, really, uh, you know, and when all said and done, our bugs are probably doing us more damage to cotton than our escape worms are up until this point. We had a pretty bad year of escape worms, 2017, 2018, 19 years. We didn't have very much, and I think most of that was located in the Tennessee Valley. So that gives us some clue of historically where should we really look um, cl most closely for escape worms. And I think we'll find it occurs in the same areas. I don't know about the same fields, but same areas year after year. So another thing to mention uh, scouting for bollworms is thresholds. So we've, we've kind of got two different thresholds in Alabama, which is going to vary almost on a field-by-field -field basis in, in some sense. And so what we've got is in fields where we haven't sprayed a, a hard chemistry in a couple of weeks, where we have abundant beneficials, uh, things like fire ants, uh, such as that, our threshold is going to be 10%. So if you find 10 uh, bollworms on 100 plants, that will be your threshold. And in, in, uh, in fields where we have sprayed, we sprayed plant bugs, we made a stink bug application, we don't have as many beneficial insects in the field, we're going to reduce that threshold to five bollworms per 100 plants. And it's very important that we're scouting our fields at least weekly, uh, really during the peak flight, we probably need to try to at least 
least pick a couple of fields uh, to look at twice a week to really make sure we're on top of this because with most of our uh, chemistries that we're using for bollworms, they're most effective when those larvae are within two to three days old. So it's very important that we're in the field when those uh, bollworms are that age so we can uh, properly time an application for our best control.